What's up guys, Brad here with Shiny Tech Things where we tech things seriously. And on today's show, I got a new modem. Now, for the past several months, with everybody been working from home, it seems like there's just never enough bandwidth. So I call up my ISP and of course I complain. I pay for 300 down and 30 up, and I'm only getting about two thirds of that speed. Directly connected to my modem, which is also fine, I can't get the speeds that I pay for. So, the question then becomes, do I need DOCSIS 3.1 over DOCSIS 3? Let's find out. Listen. First and foremost, I'm gonna go ahead and benchmark my local network. I'm running an open speed test running inside of a container running on a VM that I'm basically running this speed test inside of a Docker container. So as you can see, it's pretty close to full gigabit speed. Now I will go ahead and do the internet speed test directly with the ISP. Now just for kicks here, I'm gonna go ahead and run the speed test using speedtest.net selecting Cox's servers now. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and run the same speed tests, but from my server, in which you'll actually see how fast it can run the local speed test directly from itself to itself, because in essence, it's almost like 10 gigabit. So we're pretty much limited by disk IO, and it is running on standard platter disks. Now on to Cox's speed test again, directly from the server. And again, I'm supposed to get 300 megabits download and 30 megabits up. Again, this speed is horrible. Now let's try it again on speedtest.net. Once this finishes, I'm gonna go ahead and run another speed test, but select a different server to test it from. It is still not all that great. Here I'm actually getting the full upstream that I pay for. So that's a plus. But I will say when I'm uploading large videos to YouTube, I'm only seeing about 22 megabits in my upstream. Now to go ahead and check out my existing Eris SB6183. This is Doxus 3.0. And as you can see, power levels all look good. SNR is acceptable. There's not like a bunch of uncorrectables, so there's not really any reason why I shouldn't be able to receive the speeds that I pay for. Now, pre-COVID, I was able to hit well over 300 megabits, closer to like 330 to 350 in the downstream and upstream sometimes between like 35 to 37 but recently i haven't been able to hit anything near that so now i'm going to go ahead and call up my isp and swap out the modem with the sb8200 all right we are now back and i went ahead and swapped out the modem to the sb8200 so let's go ahead and run that speed test again and see how it performs. Well, that's not good. Still not getting the full downstream using Cox's speed test tool and upstream is still pitiful as well. Let's try speedtest.net using Cox's servers again. Definitely an improvement. I might just have to run a speed test in the wee hours of the morning when nobody else is online and see if I actually get the speeds that I used to get. back over to my server 
you'd figure if you're testing Cox's network over Cox's network that they would give a higher priority to the traffic. And that simply just does not seem to be the case. Let's refresh the modem page. There we go, here's the new modem. See, it's got 32 channels by 8. However, you can see that we only are getting 4 channels upstream. Wow, look at that. And over 181 million corrected errors. It's not so good. But it's still an improvement over what it was previously. So yeah, I will have to call back my ISP and complain yet again and see what they want to do from here.